Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, backtracks and blaming of judiciary for delays in high-profile corruption cases. And field northern presidential candidate lose election, Governor Rotimi Akurdilu threatens. This is Plus Politics, and I am Justin Akadonye. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, has backtracked on his blame of the judiciary for the delays suffered in court by high-profile corruption cases. This development comes about 48 hours after Malami completely exonerated the executive arm of government from the problems of delays as he had described it as entirely a judicial affair. Now his retraction, however, not come as not it's coming on, until about 24 hours after the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Tanko Mohammed, issued a rebuttal with references to how the executive arm of government was contributing to the problem. While not exonerating the judiciary in the delays of such cases, Mohammed pointed out various ways the executive arm of government was contributing to the problem. Now joining us to discuss this is legal practitioner Deji Awobide. Thanks for joining us on Plus Politics tonight. All right, uh, you have uh, followed uh, the, the series of events uh, from uh, who is responsible to a backtrack by the Minister of uh, Justice, Abubakar Malami. Let me just put it to you, you know, point blank as it is right now. Would you really agree with the minister if he said, when he said that uh, the judiciary was actually the cause of uh, the lease of um, high-profile cases in Nigeria? Well, uh, I think that there's a lot of blame to go around. Uh, the back and forth between the, the AGF and the CJN uh, barely just shows that there's a lot of uh, housekeeping that needs to be done. Uh, but firstly, the executive arm of government as the agencies that investigate and prosecute. In terms of, you have the ESCC, for instance, uh, will investigate commission of financial crimes, and then has the duty of using his lawyers to prosecute those uh, particular charges. Now, what you then find is that if a shortage job is done at the investigation stage, then it means that everything do fails into what you basically have in terms of delay of criminal trials and all that you have. For instance, if you compare the the rate of conviction that the entity has recorded with ordinary Nigerian descendants, you see something about 2,000 convictions. But if you go again and look at the statistics as it relates to political exposed persons, you will then see that there's a huge disconnect with the rate of substance that is recorded with ordinary Nigerians and politically exposed persons. So the CGN is quite right when he, he said that this, the uh, ESCC and the executive need to do a better job of investigating the crime. So if you do a proper investigation and you confront the defendants with the allegations, of course, what you then find is that they either plea bargain as they have recorded in several instances. Because when you confront the person with the evidence and the, it's so overwhelming, then you will have a case where they plea bargain and then they either refund some money and serve some months in prison, depending on how the plea bargain arrangement works. But in the case where all you want to do is the media trial, you quickly ask to call somebody, go with cameras, um, you have the phone fair that goes with it. And then you are not able to prove the allegations that you have confronted the person. Then, of course, it makes a more credible process. 
And do not forget that this politically exposed person um, have access to the best lawyers. Now, this particular access to the lawyers and uh, the best participants that defend is also entrenched in our constitution. So, the 6th of 6 provides that a defendant must be given adequate time and facilities for the preparation of, of his defense. So, if a person is arrested, you need to give him time to assemble the best lawyers and look at the best way possible to beat the count that have been leveled against him. So, that's why you find that this political person has the cases dragged on for years. Because you also find that these lawyers are also able to identify the technicalities involved in these cases. So you have that with Sarati, for instance. And you have that with several other cases, where um, as a result of the errors of the prosecution, the defense has capitalized on it. They've taken the case all through the hierarchy of court, and they've come back again to the arraignment. So that's why the CGM was right when it mentioned that the, the executive needs to do a better job of investigating these crimes before they now parade uh, the defendant and the attendant media trial that follows. All right, uh, so if I got you correctly, if I have to infer from all that you have said, it is a thing of um, lack of um, preparedness um, on the part of um, the institutions uh, you know, who prosecute those crimes, uh, that is the EFCC, the ICPC, or even the police, as it were, in some cases. So why would you really think that they would just want to go to court when they don't really have enough evidence, they don't have enough grounds you know, to give them a proper, you know, a day in court, uh, or is it just a thing that they want to show that they are working or something? Well, I think it's a mixture of both. Uh, because most times, don't forget that whoever heads that agency is an appointee of the president of the executive and the government. So they are there principally to do the bidding of whoever appointed them. But ideally, in certain clients where you have independence of this agency, um, you could have the head of that agency refuse to prosecute any person who's opposed to the government. But what will happen this uh, crime is that if the president or anybody in government that wields any more power wants a person prosecuted, then the agency has to find, an, find a way or an answer to prosecute that person. So that's why you find that they quickly rush to court and parade the defendant. And years after, they are unable to even prove all sound. For instance, the Sambo Dasuki has been in the custody of the OTC, or whoever, I don't even know who is keeping him now. But he's been there since uh, this government ascended onto power. And up to now, there seems to be no end in sight. There have been judgments by the Ecowas Court. There have been several others directed at the executive. And that the, the, the people obey. And that's why when the CJN said that the judiciary does not have the power to enforce its own orders, he was talking from a place of faith. Because if the judiciary cannot enforce the orders it makes, it has to depend on the executive to enforce it. Then the judiciary becomes helpless when the executive is not playing uh, according to the rules, if a court orders a particular action, the executive should lend the entire way to the implementation of that particular order. But what you find is that they select the ones to implement. So when they want to implement a particular one, which they find favorable, they quickly implement it. When they find that it's unfavorable, they do as if they haven't seen the other. So that's, so that's why the CJN made the point that the executive needs to even look inward in terms of laying blame. Because the blame largely lies with them. I'm not saying that the judiciary uh, is totally blameless. Of course, we have cases of uh, adjournment, uh, court processing, 
yeah, improper application of the law, and every other thing that that the defendant's person would exploit. So those things are there. But by and large, if the executive does his job properly, through his agency, ICPC, ACC, the police, then there is little room for error. There is even little room for maneuvering. Because when, what happens normally is if you invite a defendant that, oh, there's a particular complaint against you, the defendant comes to the station or to the agency, is promoted with a particular part. Of course, if those facts are true and confirmed, you have witnesses, you have complainant testimony, all that will be shown to the defendant. There is no room for maneuvering. So the person throws his hands up and says, okay, I'm, I, I did this thing. All right. Uh, give me a stop mandate. All right, uh, Barista Awobi, they, fine, we have uh, mentioned all of the issues uh, therein uh, on the part of um, the executive. You also pinpointed some uh, that should be dropped on the shoulders of the judiciary. But it is right now. We need to see speedy dispensation of justice in the country. We need to see those who have offended in you know, due time. You know, so just how to begin to circumvent all of that to be sure that uh, we have a judiciary that we can be proud of when Nigerians can know that justice can indeed be seen to have been done in the country. How do we move around all of this? How do, I know the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature, they're not supposed to be best bodies, as it were. There's supposed to be some sort of, uh, you know, checks and balances. But how do we ensure some sort of, uh, you know, sanity so that um, Nigerians can actually begin to see that justice is served and these criminals, you know, who, you know, loot uh, uh, the commonwealth of the nations are brought to book? Well, I think there has to be some form of synergy between the executive arm of government and the judiciary. Well, the good thing is that there have been conversations ongoing. Um, the judicial sector reform, the reform of our criminal justice system are issues that are front and center and that you've had stakeholders discuss extensively. I think the issue will not be resolved overnight, but block by block, brick by brick, I think we will get there. Now, what needs to be done is that the orders that have been placed in our criminal system needs to be removed. For instance, the reliance of technicality, which every defendant stands self has a right to exploit, needs to be removed. So all those issues that uh, defendants can say express all those the Supreme Court and then come back, we need to gradually remove them. A good thing is that the ACJ uh, has ensured that you cannot stay even that proceedings. So all those objections are continually raised at the point of reading the charge of arraignment are no longer fashionable because the law has um, corrected that. Now, also, the next stage needs to be conclusion of investigation before arrest. Mm. Because the moment you arrest the person and the news is all about the media, the common man on the street expects that justice should be served. But when you are failed to do the job of investigation properly, then it drags on and on. So the judiciary also has its own role to play by ensuring that judges speak regularly and they apply the law as it should be, dedicatedly to the job and with fidelity to the judicial oath that is taken. Corruption is also a bane of the problem. And that we need to also find a way around removing or eliminating corruption so that the process is seamless and is transparent. I would suggest that criminal trials should be televised so that televised. everybody can have access to the proceedings. Mm. You can watch it on your social, on, on your, on your phone, on your television, so that it is televised. So any errors that are made, either by the prosecution or by the judges, is evidence for all to see. So the justice will not only be seen to be done, but everybody on the street would understand that the process is in motion and that at the end of the day, those who were found wanting would serve their punishment. 
All right, Barista Obi, the, uh, the overtime, the, there have been um, calls and renewed calls for special court, you know, to try uh, these cases of um, corruption and uh, looters and uh, for, you know, politically exposed persons in the country. How far do you think that can go? Is that um, the panacea that we are looking for? Well, I, I don't see special courts as the panacea to the problem we are facing. And I say this because um, those judges have to be the heads of those special courts who will preside over those cases are still going to be taken from the judiciary. The prosecutors, the investigators, the witnesses are still going to come from the same agency. So what has changed? It's not just about just giving it a nomenclature and say we have a special court without addressing the major problem. If you fail to investigate, you can have under social court and still not any conviction. So it is important that the job is done the way it should be done. Proper investigation before arrest. After the arrest, you are arraigned. After arraignment, you go to trial. You must have witnesses in court. It's not that you, a case will come up, you have the defendant sentence to enforce, and then the police, the police says that the witness is not available. So what do you do as a judge? You are a court sentence for, for the matter, but the witness is not informed. Will the judge manufacture witnesses for the prosecution? I don't think so. In similar vein, the prosecution brings the witnesses to court, but the court is not sitting. So what happens? Everybody goes home. Manpower is wasted. Taxpayers' funds are wasted. So both sides have enough blame to go around. But it is a synergy that they need to find a way around that both of them need to work hand in hand to ensure that justice is served. There's no point having a criminal trial go on for 10 years, 9 years, or you go to the Supreme Court and come back after 10 years. Mm. All these are kind of escape from point. So all of these issues are issues that a social court would not solve. The issues are more fundamental than that. Right. So until on, on both sectors find a way to come around, both arms of government, I mean, to address this problem, we will still remain where we are. All right, uh, Barrister uh, Deji, I will be the, on a final note now uh, before we let you go. What role do you think um, the bar has to play in all of this? Uh, because at the risk of um, playing um, devil's advocate, uh, some believe that uh, lawyers or senior um, lawyers uh, you know, seem to know what is right. At the end of the day, they try to look for loopholes uh, to make uh, these uh, cases uh, you know, pro get prolonged in court and... Uh, you know, get uh, their clients, you know, out when they actually, you know, indicted oh, in such oh. issues? Great question. Uh, now, the problem that we have is that the Constitution, which is the ground norm of all laws in Nigeria, provides in the 36 of 5 that a person is presumed innocent until proven guilty. In other words, once we operate in an adversarial system, which means that the prosecution is duty bound to establish beyond reasonable doubt the guilt of the accused person. So it is not for the accused person or the defendant to prove his own innocence. The burden rests on the prosecution to establish beyond reasonable doubt that that defendant is guilty of the crime. So that's why. The, the prosecution has a very serious role to play in resolving this problem. So if the prosecution gets it out in order, there will be limited room for lawyers to maneuver. All right. Because don't forget, I, I mentioned earlier that 36 of the of the constitution allows their defendants to be given adequate time and facilities for the defense of his criminal trial. So if a politically exposed person has the resources for the best legal advocate, those legal advocates will put their best brains together to find a way out. 
and they would exploit every available loophole that is considered to against them. You would recall that Bola Ahmed was put before the Code of Conduct Tribunal at some point, but it got away on the technical ground and assembled the best advocates in the country to defend him. You can't begrudge a man who has the means to assemble the best brain possible. All right, thank you. Because just, just summarize your thoughts. You were, you were about, you were about to conclude. And go ahead, please. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So, the defendant who has the money to assemble the best brain possible is that they to do so. It is the job of the prosecution to establish that it has a watertight case to convict the defendant. All right, thank you so much. Um, indeed, uh, we have been speaking with um, Barrister Deji Awobi, and uh, he joined us to look at uh, uh, the topic for the day, uh, Malami backtracking on blaming of judiciary for delays in high-profile corruption cases. We do appreciate your time, Barrister Awobi. Thank you very much. All right, uh, thank you for staying with us, Nigeria and beyond. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, Southern governors threaten political parties who filled northern candidates for the 2023 elections. More in a moment to join us again. <laughs>